My name is Gary Harpster, and you're watching Understanding WAS and LPV, Part 104, What is WAS? This presentation will be discussing what you need to know about high-speed data for corporate aircraft and what's going on in our industry. I'll cover WAS and LPV background and operations, safety and efficiency benefits. In 2025, the United States air traffic is predicted to more than double its current capacity. Next generation is a word that you hear floated around quite a bit, and it's a transformation of the existing national airspace system. The goal is, is to increase the capacity, decrease delays, and improve safety and security. We move towards performance-based navigation. The terrestrial-based navigation that we're used to at this point in time will switch over to space-based navigation. All traffic surveillance communication systems will be satellite-based. Current space-based navigation systems are incapable of supplying enough accuracy, integrity, continuity, and availability for the most strenuous phases of flight, precision instrument approaches. GPS has to be augmented in order to give you the accuracy needed for these type of approaches. There's three methods to augment the GPS signal, space-based, ground-based, and aircraft-based. Satellite-based system, or SBAS, is the WAS satellite system. It is capable of providing accurate lateral and vertical navigation. It is a key enabler to provide RNP and SAR-capable approaches worldwide. This is the direction that the next gen is taking us. What is WAS? It stands for Wide Area Augmentation System. WAS is an extremely accurate navigation system which utilizes a combination of global positioning satellites and geostationary satellites to improve the GPS navigational service. Satellite-based navigation fits within the next-gen framework. It provides the same capability as a 60-year-old Cat1 ILS type of an approach to more runways. It's an FAA cost saver. So many decisions today are based upon cost, and this is one that saves the FAA a lot of money. It eliminates the need for ground equipment infrastructure. The core element in transitioning to satellite-based air traffic control system of the next generation. How accurate is the system? One to two meters. One to two meters, that's about as accurate as you can get. There's 31 constellations that make up the GPS network. There's 38 precisely located wide area reference stations across the country. These units provide correction to the GPS signal. They cover the continental U.S., Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Alaska, Canada, and Mexico. They collect and process the GPS information and send it to the WAS master stations. There's two wide area master stations. They develop a WAS correction message that is sent to user receivers via navigation and transponders on the geosatellites. There's two geosynchronized satellites. The WASP messages, which improve the accuracy, availability, and safety of the GPS position, giving you one and a half to two meters horizontal and vertical accuracy. There are four ground uplink stations and two operational control centers. What is the WASP coverage? WASP coverage covers the United States, Alaska, all the way down to Latin America and part of the Caribbean. On this slide, it shows you where the vertical protection level is and the lateral protection level shows you that you have accurate signal all across the United States. Is WAS worldwide? No. WAS is a regional augmentation. There's several space-based systems similar to the FAA's plan that are providing interoperability with WAS avionics. Europe is working on a system, Japan is working on a system, India is also working on a system. All of those units should be compatible with what we have in the United States. Questions that were often asked is, if I install a WASP-capable equipment, am I ready to fly LPV approaches? And the answer is no. WASP receivers cannot be installed under straight field approval. There's a lot more to the field approval process. Once it's installed in the aircraft, the installing agency needs to make sure that all equipment in the airplane is properly functioning. That means the autopilot, the scaling, Everything that becomes a part of this equation needs to be checked, so it's a lot more stringent than a straight field approval. Most WAS receivers are installed under an STC. 
Was capable avionics do not automatically mean that you can fly them to an LPV minimum. To accomplish the LPV minimums, you need dual WASP receivers. They must be certified under TSO 145-146. We're often asked the question, can I upgrade my existing navigational system to a WASP receiver? And the answer is no. The current systems are certified under TSO C-129, a completely different criteria. TSO C-145 and 146 means that the units are certified as a standalone receiver. No other signal needs to go into that box in order to give it the accuracy that it'll present on your aircraft instruments. It also requires an antenna change. The antennas are different from a TSO-129 box to what's certified in the 145-146. Installation is currently being done by STC. It requires dual GPS receivers, other equipment mods such as the scaling, autopilot, annunciation, whether it's external or on the EFA systems, and a flight test procedure are all required. For more information, call a Duncan Aviation Expert at 800-228-4277 or visit duncanaviation.aero/wasp for additional information.